Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. My name is Blake Cousins, and we're live right now sharing your UFO stories, abduction phenomenon happening right now, live on Third Phase of Moon, rated the top UFO channel in the world on YouTube. Right now, we're going to be joined by, we've got a list coming up. The caller switchboard is getting jam-packed. A Dr. J. Andy Elias, among Preston Dennett, UFO bond investigator, taking your calls from around the world in regard to the abduction phenomenon. Now let's take it to right now to Dr. J. Andy Elias. Thanks for joining us right here at Third Phase. Anytime, Blake. Well, wow, Dr. J, we're getting the lineup right now. People are calling in, and they're going to be sharing their abduction stories right now on Third Phase of Moon and encounters with possible alien entities. And we're going to take the first caller. She made contact with us a couple days ago, Dr. J. and Elias, and we're going to have her on the show right now. Amelia, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Amelia, I know... This has been, uh, you know, coming out, stating things like this in the public, going public is a, you know, a sensitive thing. We really appreciate you coming forward. What did you want to share with our audience right here at Third Phase of Moon from people listening from around the world right now? Well, I think the biggest thing that I want to, you know, the reason I'm coming out and sharing my story is because uh, there's the reality that they are among us. They're living among us. They have businesses. They have, you know, you, they might be your neighbor, and you don't know. Um, and my experience uh, reflects exactly that. Um, about a year ago, I was, I had broken up with uh, a, a man, and we separated. So I had to stay in a hotel. And the uh, owners of the hotel, this cute little German couple. I'm thinking German because of their accent, but. I was there for about a week, and then um, I was experiencing some uh, some problems, and I went to the office to uh, complain about the fact that they had an oven in there, but it didn't work, and they were advertising, you know, laundry facility, but it wasn't there. So, with my personality, you know, it was kind of stubborn, I was like, I got her kind of on edge, and... Uh, I was standing about three feet away from her. And as I was complaining about the issues that I had in my room, her eyes, which were bright blue, and she was just this cute little German woman. They were bright blue. I was standing about three feet away. And they turned from round pupils to slits, like literally reptilian slits. And they stayed there for like 20 seconds. I had seen videos on uh, the Internet, but I wasn't convinced that reptilians were real. (laughs) I mean, there's no way to really tell if that's a manufactured video or doctored or whatever. But what I saw face-to-face was this woman, and her eyes changed right in front of me. Um, I called her out on it, and I said, you know, oh, my God, your eyes look reptilian right now. (laughs) And uh, she turned her head away, and her face kind of turned flush, kind of red, but for about 20 seconds, they were like that. And she tried to explain it away that um, when she gets, you know, her blood pressure, she couldn't really say it. She got flustered, but I knew what was going on because I already knew about it, but I literally turned around, ran away, back to my hotel room, <laughs> packed my shit, and moved out of that hotel. I I don't believe that the reptilians are here for a, uh, you know, a positive, loving, peaceful reason. So that's what scared me, is I was actually face-to-face with a reptilian. We've had a, a few... People on Third Phase of Moon recently, and we just finished the Alien Abduction Diaries in regards to the Alien Abduction phenomenon, along with Preston Dennett and Dr. Jane Elias helping out on this production. And what there was a lot of descriptions of the reptilians. It's interesting, the blonde, blue-eyed, and then it kind of transforms into a reptilian kind of shapeshifter uh, enigma. Tell us about this, Preston Dennett, and uh, Dr. J, if you have an opinion after uh, that, go ahead. Um, 
Well, I've certainly heard of cases like that. I know of a case in Florida involving a woman who um, picked up a really attractive man, actually, and uh, took him to her uh, room, her apartment room, and uh, proceeded to get intimate with him, And which at some point, though, he uh, transformed and turned into a gray. So uh, he was disguised. And, some, and I definitely think there are, I mean, there are many other cases I've heard of where they're walking among us. There was a lady in New York, actually, who was on a subway, and she saw a gray-type being ahead of her on the car ahead of her on the subway. And uh, no one else was seeming to notice it. And uh, I can list other cases like this. So, yeah, they're definitely among us. Some look just like us. Some are kind of disguised, I guess, like, uh, you know, with a screen memory or whatever you want to call it. But uh, absolutely, I think they've been among us for a long time. You know, I also got to say is a lot of these people talk about them alternating from from human form to alien form, and it's not very uncommon. It could be something that's affecting them. They could be losing their energy that they're using to, to stay hidden. And, and I also want to add that a lot of people claim that the meanest species of aliens they have met are the reptilians. So it's very possible that they have a deep, dark agenda on this earth. And while we're on this subject, I just want to remind all the listeners out there that Third Phase of the Moon pays attention to the public story, and it's all about getting the public story out there. And we pay attention to every message, every comment. Blake gets everything from, you know, contact us via Facebook and Skype. They respond, and that's how people hop on the show. And we'd love to hear more stories if anyone wants to call in. Blake, you want to give them the call-in number? Well, definitely. The number to call in is one three four seven nine three four zero three seven eight. Talk to the panel, Third Phase of Moon. We've got experts on, people sharing their abduction stories. It's going to be a great show. It's just begun. I just wanted to ask again to uh, Emily, um, uh, Amelia, about what do you think? A close encounter with a possible reptilian. What do you think about that now, and uh, have you had any other close encounters no, I haven't had any other encounters, but I will tell you just from what I've learned over the years about the reptilian race that they are the most sinister. They have, you know, not good intentions here. So coming across one of them as opposed to coming across, you know, a small gray, who I believe are Pleiadian, um, that only brings love and light and oneness to our planet, um, I was a little scared to come across the race that I have learned to be one of the most, you know, sinister that feeds off of negative energy. I would love for you guys to come here and, you know, talk to these people and find out, um, you know, from them if they are here for evil or good. You know, they still own us. I could give you the address. <laughs> so you know where the aliens are sitting right now. The, the, yes, the reptilians own a hotel in Dunedin, Florida, and I would love for somebody to come here and see if they are here for good intentions. But I was so scared, and the, the energy that I felt was extremely negative, and I literally went back to my room, packed my stuff, and moved to another hotel. I was that scared. If anybody out there is listening right now at Third Phase Moon and wants to help out Third Phase, there's a special correspondent to work on assignment to get the information about what Amelia is sharing with us right now, we sure could use the help, and then we would uh, get the correspondence out to Amelia, and then we'll try and uh, uncover the secret of what's going on over there at this hotel owned by reptilians, as Amelia claims. Absolutely amazing. Stand by, I everybody. We're going to. I if I were you either, but I guarantee you, it'd probably be worth the trip. <laughs> Yeah, well, Certainly. I haven't heard any good things about the reptilians, but uh, I do understand that they've been here for a very, very long time and presumably come from and live underground in caverns on our planet and uh, do have a responsibility towards uh, causing some of, some of the negativity that is occurring on our planet today. So I don't know, I know. I don't know what to do about them. We not focus on the negative. We should definitely be focusing on the positive influences that, we're taking the calls from around the world, third phase of the moon, the the switchboard's piling up, but we're going to try and get to everybody. 
in, within this hour and get their statements into the world. Let's go to the next caller, area code 248. David's calling into Third Phase of Moon. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> All right. You were telling me uh-huh. earlier about an experience that you uh, had with an encounter when you were younger, and you submitted some video to Third Phase of Moon earlier. Go ahead. Absolutely. Those are all recent ones, but I want to get back to where it all really started and how it's kind of like my connection with them. Um, It all started back in 1979 when um, I had a close encounter of uh, a spaceship that was hovering over a house. And my case kind of doesn't sound sound believable, but um, it's true. It happened on Halloween, and um, I I don't know back in the 70s if you guys – you recall, you know, how it used to be. It's like, you know, as soon as it hit dusk, everybody would be outside trick-or-treating. Well, not in this case. As soon as we, it was time to go out, it was my mother, my brother, and I and a friend of the neighborhood. We all went out trick-or-treating. And as soon as we stepped out the door, bam, there it was. Um, it was hovering above a house in Detroit. And um, where was this again? I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't know how to explain this though. But the it, it like blanket every everything. It, it like it, there was no beam. It just it was just quiet. It was bright orange green. You could see windows in there. It, it, it was the the most amazing thing that anybody could ever see. It was beautiful actually, and um, it, nobody came out. It was just like boom, and I I feel that um, I was abducted by this thing that I just don't remember, but I do have these dreams that that happen, and um, it, it was almost like that one case where that I think that Chinese kid that you interviewed that was abducted, he said that they would they would turn into like uh, like cartoon characters and stuff like that of, of his imagination to kind of like calm him down. M- mine was similar to the same thing that he was talking about. I was just kind of like. Uh, you know, kind of nervous when I, you know, saw that. And um, wow, so they came to me watched, like they came to me like that. And um, it was in a white. It, it, it was in a you, it was in a white room. It was very you, white. What? And and well, after the after all that occurrence, before I get into that white room thing, um, I had rashes on my arms, just on my arms. And my father took me to the hospital. And to find find out what these were, and the the doctor um, said that he, he didn't know it could have been like detergent or something like that. And my mom was using like uh, detergent, so she stopped using the detergent that she was using for the for the laundry, <clears throat> and um, it didn't go away. It was still there. And then when that dream happened with the white room, they were gone. It, I mean, it, these these rashes looked like psoriasis. They were they were thick. Um, scaly, and um, they were white. They were hard. It looked like psoriasis just on my arms, like in the the, the bottom part of my my arm. And um, ever since that that um, that white room incident thing happened, it um, it appeared it had blonde hair, and it was just like smiling, and it was perfectly sculpted. It was like the the face was immaculate. You know, it was just really clean and just crisp. And um, it just smiled, and then it went away. And then after that, the the rash went away. So I, I, I don't break know up. what to make of. A little hello. Stand by, David. There's a little uh, com- feedback coming in, and we're. I just wanted to ask uh, Preston Dennett, Mufon investigator, and Dr. Jan Elias. We just did the alien abduction diaries. Similar stories are coming in from around the world different places, and they're describing the same action and sightings that they're having during these alien abductions. Preston? Right, right. This case is really interesting. What strikes me about it is going out there on Halloween Eve where it should be the streets crowded and nobody's there. Um, There are a number of cases like that. I talked to a lady. She was driving down La Cienega Boulevard here in uh, Los Angeles, which is a very crowded street, when suddenly she noticed there were no cars Next thing she notices is a ball of light drops down from the sky and starts circling around her car. So, uh, and I've got other cases like that. Bud Hopkins talks of a case where an entire neighborhood was apparently turned off, which is, seems to be what happened in this case. They have the ability to literally um, put people to sleep, or uh, so that you know that that looks like what happened here. And I agree 
that there was probably more than just a sighting that took place here. And uh, because the descriptions that you're giving are very, very similar of these, you know, white, clean rooms and uh, things like this, and certainly the rash, um, also very, very common. So, yeah, this is definitely going on, It's and it's, you know, a, a very important subject. Dr. You know, Daniel, let me I throw in there. Yes. You know, in that documentary that we did that Dave said that came as Snow White, Cinderella, a very common theme, as Preston stated in the documentary, he's researched hundreds of these cases, and they could come to you as dead relatives, some of you can come as Jesus Christ, whatever they want. And with them shutting down the neighborhoods, this is a very, very common theme. Right here at Third Phase of Moon Radio, we had Ricky C. last week who was talking about the perfect humans and this crazy pool that they wanted him to go into and breathe. He said when he was taken out of his room and through the streets and to a path where there was a park that he knew was right across the street from his house, he said the street was dead. Every morning he got up to go to work the same time, and there would be newspaper delivery trucks, people walking their dogs. But as these aliens come, it's a very common theme, Blake. The theme continues. We're getting more calls into Third Phase of Moon. We're going to get to everybody. And if you have a question for the panel or want to share your UFO experience, alien abduction experience, call into 347-934-0378. Now we're going to another caller. Right now, area code 971, welcome to Third Phase of Moon. Hello? Hi, how yeah, you doing? Hello. So, welcome to Third Phase. Do you have an abduction story or a UFO experience you want to yeah. share with the panel? Uh, yeah, when I was um, younger, in the tw- it was like the 80s, I was late 20s, um, I uh, didn't know much about UFOs or could care less, but... Um, I uh, started dating this girl, and we went out in the desert, out in outside of Phoenix. And um, these uh, blue lights was, came up and moved over, and then went back down. There was like five or six of them, and we just sat there going, "What are those?" <laughs> and um, eventually, there was one car floating over, and it had lights off. You could see the stars disappear and reappear on the other side of it, and then. Um, there was a foul smell that started covering the area. It was a really bad smell. And then um, then she yelled at me. She goes, look. And there was, uh, and so I looked, and there was a gray, a gray person standing there. It looked very old. But I was, ex- I, I was excited. I had a, I was so like, this is really neat. Um, I had told her, so I said, I'm going to go over and say hi to him. Well, she grabbed me, and she shook me and said, don't trust it. And she she put fear in me, and uh, at that moment, I, I looked at it again, and I was thinking, well, I could be eating anything, and then no, I don't remember anything after that point, except for all of a sudden, I it was I was still standing there, and um, I see this thing leave. I saw it right where he was standing, about there was a crap. It just took out. It went up, floated away, and then it was just getting to be morning. The sun was just rising up and we got in the car and left. I don't think we said a word all the way home. Well, I don't know if you know anything about a bunch of redheads living on this planet that um, they're uh, they're a part of a project or something. They've been here for a long time. I have run into several of these people and uh, I was told after my experience that you had to gain their trust and they'll open up and talk to you. Well, I got very good at this, <laughs> and I was shocked to see how many redheaded eight people would tell me their stories and, and from being used as guinea pigs, and they were always sick until they removed the thing out of their arms, and then they were turned loose, and they got healthy, and then they had a normal life. But uh, Connie was redheaded, and turns out that I was she was one of them, and uh, her whole family was. Um, and her dad was some very big, important person in uh, with aliens and the government. He had plaques on his wall. He uh, he was like a person who dealt with aliens and reported back to the government in a sense, something like that. He was called a beyond, or his plaque said one of them. And uh, anyway, I after that night, uh. I was, I was told that it would take a year to calm down, and uh, and I I did not really know how to talk to anybody at that time. I just, like, shut up, 
went and I became a recluse in my place and just stopped talking to people. I had to try to figure out what, you know, where do I go from this? <laughs> and um, anyway, so a year goes by, and I finally started opening up and talking to people, and uh, I don't know how they got my number or knew where I was at, but they called me and asked me if I was ready to talk. And I said, okay. I knew exactly who they were and what it was. It was a very short conversation. So we met, and I got explained uh, what, for the first time in my life, made sense about the planet and what's going on it. And, uh, and then I started receiving invitations in the mail to go to these private meetings that were always government people explaining what the government aliens and the government was doing together or just what the government was doing. Uh, some of the meetings were quite shocking because uh, the CIA would tell us things in, like, Columbine. I, we kind of, I, I was shocked to be told that they were going to be using children to do the shootouts instead of uh, older people at these meetings. For one of them, he was a doctor working for the CIA and explained how they do this. And now be dang, then all of a sudden Columbine happened and children are doing shootouts from now on. And uh, there is a program called MK Ultra. You can look that up. And that's what he was referring to. Uh, I found out what the government was uh, doing, these shootings, staging them, so they can get laws passed. But at these meetings, they taught us what they were doing, and basically they did not want this to happen uh, about these aliens taking over or something. The, the ones that are working with the government, you guys are talking about the ones living under the ground and whatnot. But um, anyway, uh, I also got this meteor from this guy. He had a giant uh, meteor, and a uh, thing weighed like 80 pounds. It's so huge. Sir? Anyway, yeah. Stand by. We're going to get to uh, the meteor and that story that you have. We're going to take some other callers in right now. But oh, MK no Ultra no experiment. Yeah, stand by. Yeah. The MK Ultra experiment has been going on. I think it started in the early 60s, Then there was possible, uh -huh. well, you know, major, maybe possible vice presidents, presidents that were part of this thing that was going on. I'm not, not going to name any names, but it's yeah. the MK Ultra. there was a series that we did with the MK Ultra expert that we interviewed on Third Phase Moon, and he explained that possibly Charlie Manson was part of the MK Ultra program. But on top of that, we're just going to get to uh, yeah. more information, more people calling into Third Phase of Moon. We're going to go to uh, the next caller, area code 650. Mr. Evans has been working very hard to get the word out from the Soho imagery coming in that we've been showcasing right here at Third Phase of Moon. Welcome. Hey, Robert how's Evans. it going tonight, guys? And also to Dr. John, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, you guys have always had an excellent show the thing about these alien abductions, the uh, possible, the ones with the uh, um, ability to shape shift uh, from the reptilians to looking at the human, there are just so many accounts across about that. Uh, it could be something that their body does normally, or it could be some kind of a technological ability to stay hidden amongst the humans. It's just fantastic. You know, Bob, I, you, we were saying off air, you told some amazing stuff. You've captured these NASA films, these footage that they caught with their own camera, which seemed to show, that it's available for third, on Third Phase of the Moon for the world to see, which seemed to show these giant craft next to the sun and you know, all over yeah. our solar system. And you were mentioning about some alien warfare. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, the alien warfare that has been happening, uh, I sent Dr. John and you some of the images I've been holding on to for a while because they were just a little bit hard to explain without further help, and I'm getting it now. Um, back during the ninth, uh, 2008, on several occasions, the SETCHI, which is the U.S. Navy satellite, and the NASA Stereo Ahead satellite were completely blocked by hundreds, if not thousands, of starships going past them, 
just in mass. The images before show nothing. The images after show nothing. This was something that we did to the Japanese at the end of World War II, where after they signed all the surrender papers, we had hundreds of planes fly over Tokyo just in mass to show the Japanese, ha, we won. And these images I sent to both of you show this very clear because there's just no way in heck that you would have this many starships in one location at one time if it was not being put as a warning to all of the humans that were following those images. And those images are just fantastic. You see different sizes, different designs, and they're like multi-layered. They're just, they are a chilling warning. These guys had been here for a long time, and they have warned the humans many times. And more than likely, they are working with the governments. You know, speaking of the governments and uh, MK Ultra, and it, it's amazing what the images of Soho are out. And it finds uh, we find out when people want to go back and look at these images, they're getting pulled down constantly and uh, putting black images over the images that we're putting out at Third Phase of Moon. You want to see what's going on, see the truth. Third Phase of Moon is going to be putting out the information straight to you the viewers of Third Phase of the Moon. Now I wanted to get it to a point again on this MK Ultra. No, experiment. It's a brainwashing experiment. The brainwash experiment's been going on for going on to the masses for many years. All governments participate in it. It's interesting, I just got a text coming in and it said that uh, you know, the Boston bomber just made Rolling Stone cover. And then what's up with Rolling Stone? They used to they put back in the day Charles Manson on the cover. Could this be some kind of alien anarchy? <laughs> Dr. Dandy Elias, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, that's a very interesting thing what they've done is put a, a mad bomber on there. They've also put the what some people call the most evil man on earth. MK Ultra, for those who don't know, is is not even a question of conspiracy theory because it's fact. These documents yeah. of the Freedom of Information Act were released. CIA publicly, openly admitted to this project of mind control. And, Blake, it has been suggested that people, even Jim Jones of the Jonestown Massacre, was a big experiment of mind control. Uh, this goes back to World War II era, possibly even after World War One. Blake. And hey, my brother yeah, been studying I, that I, the program. I have and no doubt that I, Yeah, go ahead, Preston. I have no doubt that the... MK Ultra is real. Um, I recently read a, a story about a boy who was kidnapped, Johnny Gosh, um, and her mother, I mean, his mother um, did not get any help from the police or the FBI or really was stonewalled at every um, angle and finally traced her kidnapped son to the MK Ultra. So uh, there's no doubt that it is going on and uh, that a, a large portion of our media is propaganda straight out. So, uh, you know. That, that's why shows like this are really valuable, where we can get the truth out. My brother, I was in uh, Illuminati and MK Ultra for many years, and we're going to do a special on this. And we invite uh, Preston Dennett. I know you've been doing a lot of reading on the subject matter for many years. We're going to have a radio show strictly on the Illuminati, MK Ultra, and what's going on. Some really hardcore stories out there that are quite sensitive, but we're going to be getting to it in the near future. Now, let me tell you, we're going to be taking calls, share your story, keep respect for the people calling in, and that's what it's all about right here at Third Phase of Moon. I wanted to go back to uh, 971. Joseph, he goes by the name Joseph, yeah. about this rock that you were talking about just earlier. Go ahead. The what? Oh, the rock, yeah. Um, the, he had this rock sitting in his front yard, and he gave it to me to cut. He wanted to see what was inside of it. It is merely a lot of iron. It has a reddish tint to it, and it's molten on the outside, and it's, uh, it definitely looks like it was a meteor. Uh, in fact, I took it to a rock museum, and they wanted to buy it from me right on the spot, a few thousand bucks, and I, I said I didn't do it because how I got it meant more to me than money. Um, 
Wow. Anyway, I took her and put her on my saw, and the minute this, uh, my diamond saw with water in it, the minute the blade touched it, the water turned blood red. And what was explained to me is this thing is iron, mostly, and uh, that was instant oxidation, like rust. That's what that was, the water. It just rust, instant rust. <laughs> and so, anyway, with my blade, when it, it took like five, six hours. I put it on automatic with bungee cords pulling into it, and uh, it took like five hours to cut, and when it was done, it left this beautiful glass smooth finish on it, which you can see, it's just, it's really nice. But it's also magnetic, it's another thing, and nothing will stick to it. You can put it in your front yard anywhere, where the dirtiest place you can find, it repels dust. Nothing will stick to it, it just stays immaculately clean all the time. And the magnetic field to it, I'm not sure what it is, but somebody explained to me they have, this is a possibility, as if I'm throwing this out in left field because it was mentioned to me, that these were placed out there like street signs, these little things. They can lock on to them and maybe tell where they're at is why it's magnetic. And uh, they're playing every now and then they fly back into Earth. But um, that's all I, uh, much I could say about it. You know, and the museum verified what it was. They, you know, they had, wanted to buy it. Um, Are you in possession of the know, rock now? Yeah, I'm, it's, I'm holding it. <laughs> and, uh, well, yeah. hold on to it. We'd sure like to uh, take a look at it. We got uh, expert material scientist uh, that we could take Great. a look and really figure out what it is, right, Doctor J? Absolutely. Uh, Third phase of the moon has the connections with people who've done Doctor Lear's implants. Looking into them, the the laboratories, the getting the lab reports. Uh, we third phase of the moon knows the right people to take this to. That's going to be give us an honest opinion and confirm what this truly is. Yeah, now we're going to go to our That'd next caller calling in live to third phase of moon area code nine five one. Welcome to the show. Area code nine five one. Are you with us at third phase of moon? Hello. Yes, sir. You're live, third phase. Have you had a UFO experience or you wanted to share with the viewers? Call drop. I think we might have lost the link. That's fine. We're going to go to area code 509 right now, live with third phase of moon. A new uh, caller in, area code 509. Have you had a UFO experience? Um, Yeah, this, um, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to do this quick because you only got 26 minutes. But um, oh, I've had many little different um, sightings. And I want to say something real quick. Like, this is going to sound weird. But, like, like, sometimes when I pop pimples and the pimples come out, they look like little creatures. They have, like, little antennas and legs, you know, kind of. But I want to go back to when I was eight years old, I was locked in a closet by my stepdad, and I was in there for a long time. And eventually, I just kind of gave up. So, And then what happened is this globe of light came into the room, like a, like a orb or a spears that people say they see. And it's it, like, vibrated a sound. And, it's, and it wasn't like English, but it was like a sound that said, Stand up and just get out of there. And I, I go, I can't. I've been in here so long and I can't move. And and it says, stand up and get out. You know, like not in English, but like in a vibrational sound. I'm sorry, I'm talking so much. Um, you still there? Hey, this the story is interesting and the telepathic signals coming from the beings, the entity beings, is quite a common phenomenon and a recurrence in all alien abduction and experiences with aliens. Preston, can you explain to us about this telepathic, you know, uh, some impacts that people feel? They feel like they're being bombarded by major brain waves. Like a sound cannon or a bunch of music from all over the world playing at once. And people can actually feel them coming well before they're coming. And uh, certainly I've heard of other cases where people have been abused as children, where ETs come to uh, rescue them. So I'm very interested to hear what happened. Um, 
So, like, I, when I was in the closet, um, I just, like, got this burst of energy because before I couldn't really move. And after I couldn't move my finger anymore, I just kind of gave up and I went into my head, I guess. And and then when it told me to stand up, I just stood up and, then, like, the door flew off the hinges and my mom was out there and, and my stepdad and he looked at me like he had this scared look on his face and... And then my mom picked me up and put me in the bathroom and washed me off, and I still couldn't move. And and I was laying in bed. She put me in bed, and I was laying in my bedroom, and I couldn't move. And I was crying, going, "Why can't I move? Why can't I move?" And this is I was like eight years old, so I didn't know about God or aliens or anything. And then the sound came back, and it was like, "Stand up and come to the come to the window." And and the, I was on the bunk bed. I was on the bottom bunk, and and I couldn't move. And I said, "Stand up!" And and I slowly was able to move. And I like I got real warm, and 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 I was like, "Wow, I can move!" And I started crying because I haven't been able to move for so long. And I thought maybe I was dead or it was a dream. And and I went to the window and I pulled the blinds up, and there was this orb just floating. It looked like like gas and oil all mixed together in water like brand new oil like how it's golden and looked like molten gold kind of and 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 it spoke like like in the vibratory sound like you said like a, it just was in my head and in my body and my, every fiber was vibrating and 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 it said like you have to be here you're here for a reason you're here to teach your stepdad to be nice you're here to step you're here to to teach him to be kind and to teach him what he's doing to people. He's not just doing this to you, he's doing this to other people and you need to show him to be kind and I was like what? and all this other stuff that I just you know, it's like it's been so long but I, I held yeah, it in that sounds like a spirit visitation t- to me. Um not necessarily sure if that's UFO related, but uh, it sounds like a spirit guide or something like that. You don't you don't think it was like alien because it was like after that time I would see the alien greys like oh, before, all right you know, I never I never saw them before I never knew what they were I just thought they were like like bugs like you know and and as I got older and when I saw the first um, the movie of the um, Close Encounters when they came out of the it was like all no aliens through the whole movie until the end and it came out of the ship. And when I saw that, that's when I knew what was around. And, like, like sometimes I'll be sitting, because I sit in the backyard a lot, and and you'll see, I'll see something right there. And I look at it, and when, I, when it knows that I'm looking at it, it like, it's, like, gone. It's, like, a, like evaporated or something, like, like predator, kind of. It was interesting. We're just, we're just going over uh, the close encounters of the third kind, and we shared a quick frame that lasted for a split second. And we're trying to get a uh, copyright to this still frame of uh, Michael Jackson made the set during the very grand finale of Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Dr. Danny Lyons, in your opinion, was that uh, Michael Jackson, the king of pop, right there working with Steven Spielberg on the set? You know, if I was to put a gamble, I would definitely put that as very high odds because if it's not him, it's remarkably very similar. And i got to add for all the listeners out there, he was very, very interested in extraterrestrials, and he was also very good friends with Spielberg. So it's very conceivable that he would be on the set filming such an important scene, which apparently was based on actual facts. We want to go to uh, callers coming in that seen uh, witnessed UFOs for themselves. Erico 248, I know you submitted some videos to us. It just didn't quite make the cut because we're looking for, you know, the best videos. We get a lot of footage coming in right. around the world. But uh, I know seen it for yourself on the ground with your own eyes. Now, that's the story. Can you go into a detail when it started and what happened when you witnessed the UFO? Uh, okay, um, there, there's a couple different times. The, the first one was the, the triangle one. Uh, that was just amazing, totally amazing, because I, I posted like about 12, 12 to like 15 of them or something like that, but there was more. There was more. And what's, what, what's so odd about it that they cloaked themselves. 
And what happens, they have like these little blinking lights that you cannot see. And then when they come into orb formation, like the like they're on fleet, they'll they'll have this big orb going around them. And then they'll disappear and they'll be cloaked. And then you'll see like a little blinking light happening, like a thing. But when I first saw them, they were all orange and there was a, a fleet and these, these things looked like they were on a mission. They were they were on a mission. They were like they came out of a vortex and they were boom, they were ready to go. And if you if you notice in the, the ending of the video, they'll the blink and they're they're like they're like they drop vertically and then they'll just just disappear. But when they when I first saw them, they were just like bam. That was the one time. Second, this recent one, seven nineteen, two thousand thirteen, was just they were just grazing. They were just floating along the the, the area. And um, the, uh, they would cloak, too. And one was above me at the end of the, the video. Um, I looked up, and that thing was, like, observing me. It was, it was looking down at me, and it was observing me. Because as soon as I went in the car, that thing got closer. But they were, they were just grazing. Every, I, there was traffic going on. I mean, I could send you, like, the whole video. I mean, there was people around. And there was, like, just so many of them. And um, David, you can count, David. like, about, I think, like, six of them or so. And um, David, if, uh, David, if you could resend that video, it might have got lost in the mix. Go, let's send it in. You're on the radio show now. We're going to show your video that you shot as you just described it. And now, again, the switchboard is Blake, one more, filling can, up. Can I say one more thing, Blake? Um, th- these yeah. things, I Go think they're, yep. they're, they're, they're checking out the weather pattern. I, I get that impression that they're just observing the weather in here, because it, it was kind of like the same the the, the the other incident that I that I had with them, and they were just like monitoring the, the weather structure or something, because they just gaze around there and they just float. And um, oh, and another thing too, I saw uh, two of them. Um, as soon as I was done with that, I got in the car and I had my dog with me, and I dropped my dog back off in my apartment, and then I went on foot, and I was really close to uh, U of M to the hospital, and that's where I saw two of them. Two, and I and I witnessed it. There was they weren't drones. They didn't have any helicopters in there. And you couldn't see right through it. These things were hovering. They're like a big ball of energy, and they were just floating. They had the, the noise was almost like a metallic like like a hum, like a very faint, but there was no pro- propeller, no choppers or anything on the top. They were just floating energy, balls of energy. It was the most amazing thing, and they just disappeared right behind the, no, we like, gotta, uh, the building. We got uh, we got a response to what you were just saying in regards to the weather, and uh, does climate change signals? Uh, ET, ETs come in here to look at what the climate change is. We notice when there are major storms happening during the Sandy hurricane coming yeah. in, and there's a lot of activity going on, and we're getting right. these videos coming in from around the world while what? major storms are going on. We're going to take more calls coming in. Everybody just stand by. Area code, let's see. Let's go, 817. Welcome to Third Phase of Moon. Hi, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Have you had a UFO experience? Do you, any video documents? That we want to, you want to share um, the third phase. I had a picture. I don't have any pictures to share, but I do have a story. It was, uh, okay, I think, uh, June we about 7th. 50, we got about 15 minutes left. If you could share your story, you got two minutes. Go ahead. Okay. It was about June. I think it was June seventh or eighth. Uh, I was out in my backyard. I have nine acres of property, and the back three acres are all wooded area. And I was back there checking to see if there were any uh like burn areas from fireworks like I check up on that stuff, you know. And um I I was out there and the wind suddenly picked up like really 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 heavily and it was really strange because there hadn't been wind like all day. And I looked up and I saw three flashing orange almost yellow lights and above it was at top of a tree where it was, and the just the wind was just cracking down on this tree. Branches were flying off, and the leaves were going everywhere. It was crazy. I was terrified, and I'm at least 85% sure it was the UFO. You also mentioned that you took a couple photographs. Have you shared those with Third Phase? 
Um, no, because whenever I was leaving, I, I was I ran. I was terrified, and I left my uh, camera because uh, after it was done, all the wind was blowing. It broke the tree. The tree broke in half, and I ran. I took a picture real quick, and then I sprinted. That is probably the best thing to do. Stand by. We're taking more calls to Third Phase of Moon with more stories going live. We've got 14 minutes left, but let's get to the next call. Area code 661. Welcome to Third Phase. Thank you very much. you So I have a very quick story. Um, I'm sure you guys are used to hearing something like this, uh, but I can tell you that from personal experience, um, I am from uh, – I'm from – out near Edwards Air Force Base in California, uh, very flat desert, um, nothing around for miles. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, as far as the point on the weather goes, they're very aware of the weather change, um, at least a, a couple sets of them are, uh, and they understand exactly what's going on. Um, they're here to, to try to help the people who, who would like to, to believe in them. Um, obviously, most people don't believe. Most people think it's crazy. Most people think that, oh, you know, we're alone in the universe, which is statistically an insane thing to think. Um, but uh, our, our governments are actively uh, are actively suppressing this. Um, it's been expressed to me several times. Um, you know, I can tell you just uh, just from being out in the desert uh, several nights, um, I've, I've had multiple experiences uh, with uh, floating orbs, balls of plasma. Um, I've been chased off by uh, uh, chased off of Edwards Air Force Base by um, black SUVs. I've been stopped by police after going out there. Um, you, you name it, um, you know, I've, I've, I've experienced and seen it. And I can tell you that they are very aware of the climate change that's going on, um, and they are actively trying to help us. Um, there's a lot of great work being done by some, uh, by some, some people uh, researching crop circles. Um, I'm sure you guys are very familiar with that kind of stuff. Yes, most of them are hoaxes, but there are ones that are very, very real. They're trying to help us. They're trying to warn us, and they're they're trying to steer us in the right direction so that we can uh, we can become you know what our our species birthright is, which is to expand out into the stars. Um, and uh, uh, you know they they've been here before. Um, they're they're here again, and they're they're trying to help us out. But uh, you know, um, as as far as the weather goes, I thought it was a very interesting point that you guys brought that up uh, because it's it's one of the main reasons that you're seeing UFO sightings uh, starting to starting to increase and and people's encounters starting to get more and more vivid, more and more uh, documented, um, obviously with the rise of technology and things like that. Um, but I, I just wanted to touch on that point um, that, uh, you know, I, I, I've been, it's been expressed to me, um, you know, through the, the same means, the, the vibrational frequencies, the, uh, the, the thought patterns, that they are actively trying to help us, um, you know, a, escape. Um, I, I, I understand that we don't have much time here, um, but I just wanted to express uh, that, you know, they, they are trying to help us um, and uh, while while it is a scary thing to go through, just know that they don't they don't mean you harm. Um, they're not trying to hurt you. They're not trying to harm you. Um, they just want to play the game. Uh, and uh, and that's that's pretty much all I have to say. Hey, very well said about the desert experience. Dr. J is coming up, and we have a contest out. People from around the world could participate. If you're in the California area region, it's your lucky day. We're going to be holding this contest. Dr. J, give the details of what this major event's all about. This is an exclusive contest to enter to win a ticket once a week for one lucky winner to contact in the desert. Some of the top ufologists, it's actually a large array of them, everybody ranging from Dr. Greer to George Osukalos, George Nori, Dr. Lear, so many of them. And people say, this is a rumor going around, that if contact is going to happen, it'll happen this event. Because this place is known for alien contact. Uh, aliens allegedly landed there in the 50s and 60s. But nonetheless, exclusive third phase of the moon contest to win a ticket. Go to contactinthedesert.net slash third phase of moon enter and you'll the winner will be announced every week thursdays 8 to 10 p.m eastern standard time on freedomslips.com if you hear your name and you're the winner you call in 818-923-1713 enter contact in the desert.net slash third phase of moon you know the area 51 story is still going on we're getting some texts coming in there's earthquakes going on the climate change earthquakes the activity of ufos fracking is going on we're getting texts coming in what is going on around planet earth 
UFO activity is going rampant. Third phase of the moon is going to show it. Dr. J. Andy Elias, any last words for the viewers? You know, there's a lot of activity. Just keep sending your footage because third phase of the moon is dedicated to showing the world the world story. Thanks again, Blake. Thank you, Dr. J. Andy Elias. Preston Dennett, thanks for being right here with us at third phase. Oh, thanks. My pleasure. Wow, the, the lines were packed. People called in. It was a very insightful radio show. Mr. Evans, we're going to be getting to your new images next week exclusive right here at Third Phase Moon that you're going to share with us from so, from the Soho imagery. Thanks again, Robert. No problem. Thanks. Mr. Uh, David, thanks for yeah. sharing your stories right here at Third Phase Moon. And everybody that called in, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on your show. It's been a pleasure. Great. My name's Blake Cousins, and we'll see you again next time.